Lesson 4-5, matrices for scale changes. In contrast to size changes, which you studied previously, a scale change can transform a figure by stretching or shrinking it in either a horizontal direction, a vertical direction, or in both directions at once. For any non-zero numbers A and B, the transformation that maps the point X comma Y onto A times X comma B times Y is called the scale change transformation. And it's got a horizontal magnitude of A and a vertical magnitude of B. And the way we write this or denote it is scale, you know, the function scale sub A comma B. Now the thing that's neat is you, your A and your B, as long as they're not zero, they can be um, big, they can be small, <laughs> and we're going to shrink or expand, shrink or stretch the figure depending upon what these coefficients turn out to be. Alright, if the A or the B, if the absolute value of A or B is greater than 1, the scale change is called a stretch. So if you multiply the A or the B by 2 or by 3 or whatever, if you multiply, uh, if the A is, let's say, a 3, that means the horizontal is going to stretch. The, the, the figure is going to get wider. If the B is greater than uh, 1, the vertical dimensions on the figure will stretch. And again, the A and the B don't have to be the same on a scale change. All right, they can be different. So you can be making it wider and making it tall. So you can distort figures with scale changes as opposed to size changes where both the horizontal and the vertical motions are exactly the same. So you create similar figures with size changes, but scale changes, you can, uh, you can transform figures and morph them. Now, if the absolute value of A is less than 1, or the absolute value of B is less than 1, in other words, if we have fractions here in front of, uh, if we're multiplying by like 1 third or 2 thirds or 5 eighths or 1 ninth or whatever, the scale change is going to cause the figure to shrink. Let's say we should take a quick look at notation. We read this notation, the scale change sub a comma b maps x comma y onto ax comma by. All right, now the Euler notation isn't very much different. That Euler function notation would look like this. The size change sub a comma b of x comma y equals a x comma b y. Two different ways of saying exactly the same thing. All right, let's do a real quick little uh, scale change. Let's start with a square and we're going to call this square Alex. All right, let's algebraically morph Alex according to the following code. Alrighty, let's see. Let's do this. Let's perform a scale change sub one half comma three. And we're gonna map all of the x's and the y's in Alex onto one half x comma three y. All right, let's go ahead and get Alex's point matrix. All right, point A, is at negative 1, positive 1. Point L is at 1, 1. Point E is at 1, negative 1. And point X 
is at negative 1, negative 1. So there is Alex, this point matrix. All right, now let's see what she's going to turn into when we apply the scale change. All of her x coordinates are going to be cut in half. So this is going to become negative 1 half, positive 1 half, positive 1 half, and negative 1 half. And all of her y coordinates are going to get multiplied by 3. They're going to triple in size. So this will become 3, 3, negative 3, negative 3. Now let me go ahead and graph these just to see what she will look like. All right, let's see here. Negative 1 half 3, positive 1 half 3, positive 1 half negative 3, negative 1 half negative 3. Okay, boy, she ain't no square anymore. No, she is not. Look at that. Woo! Now we have Alex Prime. She's a big, long, tall spaghetti box. She went from being a square to a spaghetti box. All right, now, so you can see we've got two point matrices. Now, we wanted to go ahead and figure out what did we multiply by here to get the new matrix. I know I multiplied by all the x's by a half and all the y's by three, but we should be able to illustrate this with a matrix, and indeed we can. If we take the identity matrix and instead of the ones being in these two spots, we put in them the scale change factors, we will actually create a scale change matrix. All right, if I put the one half in here and a zero in here, zero here and the three here, what you will see is if you take this times this, you will get this. So this is called your scale matrix or your scale change matrix and it's always in the form A, zero, zero, B. Okay, and this is your basic matrix for the scale change A, scale change sub A comma B. Always, always works. It's really a special case of a scale change and that's where the A is equal to the B. Okay, so if A equals B, you're getting just a straight size change and you'll create similar figures and all the uh, ratios of the corresponding sides will be equal, angle measures will be equal, and everything that we saw in Lesson 4.4 will hold true if A is equal to B. Yeah, yeah. It's math mix-up. Everybody, everybody's math. math. Gotta love the teacher. You happy?